Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian, and I'm one of the co-founders of DC Spark, a crypto ecosystem builder company. And in this video, I wanted to talk about account abstraction. And notably, this is a concept you might have heard of a lot recently, uh, because the Ethereum ecosystem is talking a lot about it. And in, in this video, I want to talk about account abstraction in the context of Cardano, and the progress made towards it in the Cardano ecosystem. So first of all, what is account abstraction? So one of the problems with blockchains right now is that smart contracts are often treated differently from regular user wallets. And this is not great. Why? Well, two main reasons. One is that it increases code complexity, complexity a lot. So if you're writing a piece of code for Cardano, for example, you usually have to do if smart contract do something, and then if it's not a smart contract, do something else. And so this is this increases the amount of code you have to write, increases the complexity of the logic you have to think about. And so this can easily introduce errors. Another downside of, of not having account abstraction is that it makes it hard to write smart contract wallets. So it would be great if you could um, have smart contract wallets because uh, currently all the wallets in Cardano are usually 24 word recovery phrases. And this is fine, but you may want to have situations where you have 24 words or a social recovery of some kind. Uh, for example, like some kind of multi-sig owned by uh, family members. So this kind of uh, wallet where it's not just a private key, but a private key and some extra logic uh, is basically only really usable if you have account abstraction because then you can treat these um, you know, special wallets the same as any other wallet. There's no downside from a UX perspective of using one of these extra, you know, fancy wallets compared just to just a regular wallet. So now that we have some some context in, in what the account abstraction is, this is notably popular in Ethereum right now because this is something Ethereum has wanted to have for a long time, but does not have at the moment. And currently, Ethereum has um, quite a lot of layer two solutions being built on top of it. And some of these layer two solutions, because they have more flexibility, flex, flexibility in what they can implement, have decided to just go directly for account abstraction and provide that by default for version one of their launch. Uh, so although the Ethereum layer one does not have full account abstraction and there are EIPs to um, add various levels of support for this, um, some Ethereum layer twos already have this out of the box. And so uh, what about Cardano? So uh, we, Notably, in which cases um, does Cardano treat smart contracts differently from user accounts and what different um, initiatives are going on to, to try and reconcile these differences? So to understand this, first I have to explain briefly that Cardano actually does not have one, uh, one kind of smart contract. It actually has two. Um, so there's three things in Cardano. There's um, uh, verification keys. So verification keys are just like the regular uh, keys you have from your wallet from like 24 word recovery phrases. So this is what you're most used to. Uh, there's two, which is Plutoscripts, which is um, what a lot of dApps on Cardano use. And then three, there's something called native scripts. And you might not know, but this is actually something that you use very often. For example, for NFTs, um, they usually use native scripts and a lot of multi-sigs in Cardano are native scripts as well. Um, the difference between Plutoscripts and native scripts is that native scripts are very simple. They can only have a very small amount of functionality. So for example, they um, allow saying um, require signature. So require a verification key. I was called this V key for short. So they can require V key they can require um, M of N, they can require all, they can require or, they can do before time, and they can do after time. And these primitives are, are fairly useful because this is all you need for multi-sigs and NFTs because you can say a multi-sig is just M of N. So for example, uh, three of five require keys. So you require three, um, three or five different keys. And for multi-sig, this is sufficient because you can say, um, basically you can mint uh, before 
slot number. So if you've ever seen like an NFT mint where it says like this NFT can be minted up until this specific slot in the Cardano blockchain, it's because they're using um, you know this functionality specifically. And so VKs have a or sorry, native scripts have very limited functionality. They're not generic uh, program languages like Plutus. Uh, but uh, this differentiation will become important um, as we discuss account abstraction. Uh, so first, let's talk a, about the four key parts in Cardano where uh, smart contracts are treated differently from uh, vKeys, these uh, standard um, user account wallets. And the first one is stake pools. So in stake pools, um, the pool owners have to be vKeys. So you cannot have a stake pool that's owned by a smart contract. However, there is a paper by IOHK uh, called Conclave which talks about um, basically ways for people to aggregate their clat or their not their collateral their their pledge together um, to basically create one pool as a group. And one way you could implement this is through scripts as the pool owner. So Conclave is one effort that has started. You can find the research paper on IOG's website um, that would basically uh, move pool owners from being just keys to also being uh, contracts of some kind. There's another one called collateral inputs. So if you've ever used a Cardano wallet, you might have realized that, that you cannot interact with smart contracts until you set your collateral. This is a requirement of Plutus contracts on Cardano. The reason why is because contracts in Cardano are deterministic, they should never fail. Um, but even though they're deterministic, deterministic and should never fail, uh, somebody could purposely submit a transaction with a contract that fails. And so whenever that happens, uh, the transaction will instead consume their user's collateral. So collateral is basically a way to say, um, Cardano transactions are deterministic. This smart contract will not fail. And I'm so confident they will not fail. I'm willing to put, you know, five ADA up as collateral, um, and take it if, if I'm lying to you. So currently collateral inputs can only be V keys and they cannot be uh, anything else. Now, the way we will most likely implement um, account abstraction in Cardano, the probably uh, most simplest way is through extending native script support. And uh, although you can have account abstraction by convincing everybody to use Pluto scripts, um, collateral actually makes this difficult in a sense uh, and we'll talk about how we're going to get around some of these limitations. Uh, but native scripts, uh, although currently Cardano cannot pay collateral, um, there's not really a reason to enforce this limitation. And, and there might be a SIP in the future to allow native scripts to uh, be used as collateral input. So um, collateral inputs is, is one place where VKs are required. Um, might be extended to native scripts as well in the future, but we'll definitely um, you'll never be able to use Pluto script as collateral. So that's one uh, part where it's different. And then uh, one way to get around this and allow Pluto scripts um, to power smart contract wallets, uh, even though they can't provide collateral, is through a collateral paying service. So if you're using a Pluto script, the and as your wallet, so you're using a Plutus script as your wallet, you have a problem because all the transactions you make are in Plutus, but also means that you can't pay collateral for your wallet. So every time you try to interact with a smart contract on Cardano, you get an error saying uh, you can't interact with, with this wallet because you're not paying collateral. So one way we can get around this is by having a collateral paying service where basically every time you create a transaction for your wallet, you're outsourcing this um, collateral to a third party. So for example, DC Spark could run a server where you um, have the DC Spark server over here, and the user submits a transaction to the server, an unsigned transaction. DC Spark checks the transaction, makes sure everything looks good, uh, and the transaction will not fail. And if it looks good, they'll return the transaction um, or some kind of transaction success message plus 
a collateral input. So instead of the user providing the collateral, it's instead the collateral paying service that provides the collateral. Now, this is not a business model. There's no way to uh, run this as a, as a profit currently because as you may know, Cardano has something called min UTXO, which means that you cannot send less than one ADA to somebody. So if some kind of collateral paying service was uh, running this for profit, they would have to charge everybody at least one ADA per transaction, which is a fairly steep cost. Uh, so maybe somebody will try and make a for-profit service for this anyway. Uh, this is one of the main limitations and why nobody has really built a collateral paying service so far. However, if we do have a collateral ser uh, paying service, for example, if DC Spark builds one, uh, then this would uh, facilitate having account abstraction for Plutus because it means that although they cannot pay collateral directly, they could uh, defer the collateral, um, uh, putting up collateral to a, a service. And another place where actually native scripts and, and uh, smart contracts are different is native scripts themselves. So notice that we have a require V key, um, but we do not have a require scripts. So ideally, we would extend native scripts to support a require scripts call um, to basically unify V keys and require scripts together. So there's always at least um, one way to handle it. There is a SIP for this called, um, uh, it's called SIP 38 and it's proposed by DC Spark that basically adds this require scripts call and facilitates uh, account abstraction based off native scripts um, because then you can have your uh, wallet be a native script and these native script wallets can then uh, require more complex Plutus scripts uh, for the behavior. So for example, your native script would have a require keys. So your, your 24 words would be a require keys calls and notice that um, native scripts support an or. So you have your or here from your native script and the social recovery, this would be a require script. And then so this entire um, account abstraction wallet would be one native script. And so this is the other way that, um, you know, native scripts could be brought to Cardano is through SIP38, which adds a lot of the functionality required. So as long as we have um, SIP38 plus a collateral payment service, then we have the two key building blocks to bring account abstraction to Cardano. And both of these are, are in the works um, by DC Spark, so we're, we're hopefully going to be working on both of them. So hopefully now you have a good idea of the roadmap on uh, account abstraction for Cardano. There's some other work that could be done on this as future work. So obviously, um, Conclave is not quite done yet. Uh, it's not implemented in Cardano main chain, so that can be some extra work. Uh, but another thing that that might be interesting is is there's a SIP currently being discussed for post quantum cryptography. And the problem with post-quantum cryptography for Cardano is it's not currently supported um, anywhere in Cardano. We don't have a unique quantum post-quantum cryptography scheme. Now you could add these to Plutus, um, but you could also say that we could add these to native scripts. And so that's also an interesting discussion because then you could have um, in the future, possibly like require keys, require scripts, or like require uh, post quantum cryptography or other kind of uh, key schemes inside native scripts. Now, obviously, that's a separate discussion for another day. I um, just wanted to kind of bring this up to open your eyes to some of the future potential work in this area. So, that's it. That's our, over our overview of account abstraction in Cardano. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have educational content like this coming out all the time, and you won't want to miss it in the future. Take care.